Hello guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to my channel. After trying out and comparing two different GTX 1660 Ti's from MSI, if you missed out on that one, feel free to check it out in the right top corner of this video. I again have a chance to do a similar comparison, but with the GTX 1650 series of Nvidia's latest lineup, in particular their Gaming X and Ventus X SOC editions. Both cards have that familiar MSI design cues, the Gaming X in its 7th generation of their twin frozer cooler design, this time moving away from the black and red color scheme and going for the silverish grey and black combo. On the other hand, the Ventus XS OC series design-wise looks more like their other lower budget armor series, but overall it seems like they've narrowed down their color choice across the board. MSI's Ventus XS series is actually their so to speak lowest tier series, it doesn't have any bells and whistles of its higher tiered brother, like in this case and in this comparison to the Gaming X model. So for example you'll be missing out on the 0 Frozer 0 RPM 0 dB fan feature which stops the fan spinning when the card is idling, but you'll rather get these ones which spin constantly, with of course change in speed depending on the GPU temperature. There's also no RGB or any kind of lighting for that matter on it. No. But it's to be expected considering where this model is placed in the lineup. The cooling setup is also pretty modest as you can see it here for yourself. It doesn't have any heat pipes on it, just a somewhat fair sized aluminum heatsink with two fans on top of it. On the other hand, with the Gaming X model you'll get your usual set of features, lighting, although not that impressive with this particular model, just this side dragon logo glows and you cannot change its color, and a bit beefier cooling with a heat pipe setup and their larger and more capable Torx 3.0 fans. What they do have in common is that they both don't bring any kind of backplate, which is a bit disappointing, I was expecting at least something on the more expensive model between these two. The GTX 1650 Gaming X model is also a bit longer, but not because it needs that extra space on the PCB for the components, because the back end of it is completely empty, but rather because of its cooling solution as it takes space, while it's also heavier by about 140 grams. There's also a difference in video output setup, where the Ventus XS model beside the HDMI and display port brings in a DVI-D instead of a second display port as provided on the Gaming X model. Lastly, the GTX 1650 Ventus XS OC model doesn't utilize or need additional PCI Express power connector, you can just plug in the card into the PCI Express X16 slot on your motherboard and you're good to go, while the Gaming X does require a 6-pin PCI Express power connector from the power supply. I have benchmarked them both at their out-of-the-box stock lock values, as I don't see a point in using their preloaded OC profiles because I always do my manual overclocking anyway, and besides that, the Ventus XS OC model doesn't even have any of those profiles preloaded on it, plus you need to keep their Dragon Center software opened at all times so it keeps that OC profile loaded, because if you close it off, it goes back to the default profile, which is a bit silly and I don't want any unnecessary applications opened in the background. Also this way I can see how the cooling performance and GPU cherry picking affects the boost clocks on each model, which is something that I am, and probably you are, interested in seeing. As you can see here, the GTX 1650 Gaming X model has a slight performance advantage over the Ventus X SOC model, but you could say that they are pretty much neck and neck. On paper the Gaming X model has a much higher boost clock, but in reality when you put them under load, they both perform pretty similarly and reach basically the same GPU clock speeds, Gaming X model surpassing the Ventus XS OC model by only around 30 MHz. Where the Gaming X model takes the lead is in the overclocking potential. I was able to clock its GPU a bit higher, which made it reach around 2130 MHz under load, just enough to provide around 5% difference in performance comparing to the Ventus XS OC model, which boosted to around 2000 MHz under load when overclocked. Strangely enough, the Ventus XS OC model won the video memory lottery and clocked better than the Gaming X model by about 60 MHz, but that didn't help her in the end in overall performance. When you draw the line by overclocking either of them, you'll get a total of around 15 to 20% performance jump compared to their stock values, which is actually pretty decent. 
Looking at the temperatures, idle figures between them were vastly different since the Gaming X model runs passively when the GPU temperature is below a certain number, which gave the Ventus XS OC model an advantage in this scenario since its fans always spin. Interestingly enough, both of them had a very similar results under load, roaming around 60 degrees Celsius on an open test bed, but I was a bit left in the dark because of the fact that I couldn't read the fan speed from Ventus XS OC model, since it had a bit lower temperature, but it just wouldn't show up anywhere. I could just guess by the fan speed percentage and noise that the fans were probably running a bit faster on it, while with the Gaming X model that was mostly around 1100 RPM mark. Obviously, the Gaming X model is dead silent during idle since the fans don't spin, while the Ventus XS OC fans are barely noticeable. Here's a short sound clip of both of them under full load, while also using the sound meter for measurement comparison. What's also not that different is their power consumption. With the configuration that I've used here for my testing purpose, you can check it out down below in the description box, both barely touch the 150 watt mark under full load during gameplay, and that's with an overclocked 6 core CPU, so I would say that they easily draw far below 100 watts on their own. It's really impressive to see that considering their performance output for that amount of power requirement, we've definitely come a long way when it comes to that in the last 5 years. That's all well and good, but on the other hand, it doesn't change the fact that Nvidia's GTX 1650 series as of right now is sort of misplaced when it comes to current GPU market state, where it actually falls in relation to other products surrounding it, their own and from the rivals, because price to performance wise, it's really hard to justify its purchase. But if that would change at a certain point in future, if I or you would have to choose between these two MSI models down the line, between the GTX 1650 Ventus X S O C and GTX 1650 Gaming X model, I would personally pay that extra $10 difference for the Gaming X model, since I think it's worth that additional money considering the features it brings in, in particular the zero RPM fan mode, that's a selling point for me. Others will probably find that a good selling point for the GTX 1650 Ventus X S O C model, beside its lower price, is the fact that it doesn't need additional PC Express power connector, so it features a pretty painless upgrade option to a less equipped or older PC, which is in need of bumping up its 1080p gaming performance. Your only task is to make sure it fits in your chassis and has a physical PC Express X16 slot, and you're basically good to go. When we draw the line, both of the cars represent a different approach and side, so to speak. Yours is to choose which one you'll go after depending on your needs. That's it for this time from me. Thank you once again for watching. Toss me a thumbs up if you enjoyed my content. That really helps a lot. And if you like what you saw, feel free to subscribe. And if you already are, be sure to press that notification bell down below so you don't miss out on a new video. And until then, catch you later, guys.